Welcome back, mental health warriors. Awesome party people everywhere. Hopefully future bloggers and vloggers. Um, this is a video that I've been needing to do for months and months now. Um, kind of the whole reason why I started a YouTube in the first place. So uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a mental health blogger. I've been blogging for five years. I get over 2,500 reads a month and it's monetized, which means I make money off of it. Um, I've had so many requests from different people, different um, like nonprofit groups to do some class series on blogging, not only for mental health, but how to make money from a blog and Whew, there's a lot to go over because there's so much that goes into it. Got a hair in my face or something. I don't know how much I'm going to get through recording today. Um, just because there's a lot to go over. So if I'm like changing outfits and the lighting changes and stuff, that's why. I've got a little handy dandy notebook here. It's so pretty. And I've got my notes. I always take lots and lots of notes. So if you're here to learn about blogging, you're in the right video. Welcome, welcome. So if you wanna check out my blog first before getting into this video, feel free. Uh, the click through link is at lindsayloomis.com and all of it is linked below. I started my blog in 2015 because I wanted to show or maybe it was even 2014. I wanted to show the process of my wedding planning. So that's kind of what we're gonna get into first is how you start a blog. So you need to pick a topic, but it doesn't have to be one topic. So just hear me out. Like it doesn't have to be just one thing, but if you want to have something, so it's like the same type of content every day, pick one topic, it's easy to start with. That's what I was doing with mine at very first was, this is, you know, adventures in wedding planning, the different like crafts I was doing and stuff. Um, or you can just have your blog topic be everyday journaling. So there's always that too. Um, pick something that you're excited or knowledgeable about or both. So I was excited about planning my wedding. Um, I had never planned a wedding before and I was excited to show just kind of the learning process and the things I was going through as I was planning it out. Um, and since I was already excited about it, it was motivating me to make new posts um, and to write new things for it. So that was fun. Plus it was like a fun way too for like my family and friends who didn't, um, who couldn't see me every day because they lived on the other side of the country from me. It was a way for them to kind of keep up with my like wedding planning process. Um, so pick something that you're excited about or that you have a lot of knowledge about. Um, or you can pick something that you want to learn more about. So let's say like there's a topic uh, that you want to pick that let's say you don't know anything about it, but you want to be an expert like guitar or piano or anything. Um, you can write about your journey through how you're learning about that topic, what you're learning. Um, and then you can attract other people to read that that also want to learn that same thing that you're trying to learn about. So that's another way you can pick a topic to start as well. Um, life changes are make really good blog content. I would say anytime I had a blog that I wrote about something that was happening to me that was hard to go through, I would get way more reads than like, oh, everything's perfect and fine and wonderful in my life. Like, I mean, that's fun, that's nice, uh, but people, you know, when they're on the internet, they wanna reach out and find other people that are kind of like suffering the way everyone suffers. So you know, you want to kind of find camaraderie in that. So maybe pick a life change you're going through. Some ideas are, like I said, planning a wedding, maybe you're having a baby. So it's like a pregnancy blog, um, switching jobs. So like, let's say you're going from like waitressing to like working in a salon. So like, um, which is something that I did, I didn't blog about it, but, uh, 
just the changes in your job and like the things that you're learning and the situations that you're in or moving like do a blog about your moving like let's say you're moving across the country so do a blog about that like all the different um tools that you have to use to pack and like where you're going to get your boxes and like tips and tricks things like that um the other topic or the way to think about something to write about is to tell a story when I use the tag story time in my blogs, I guarantee my readers click on that right away because people love to hear stories. And if you think that like, oh, I don't have any interesting stories in my life just because you're not like me and didn't get like arrested on your first date or whatever, because that actually did happen to me. I got arrested on my first date with my husband. Check it out in my blog. Um, just because you don't have like funny or crazy stories like that doesn't mean that no one wants to read it. People love just like hearing about what other people do day to day. That's kind of why there's this huge popularity and like, oh, this is my morning routine. This is my night routine or that like get, get ready with me. Things like that. People love that kind of content. We just, uh, I think as human beings like to look inside each other's lives and see how everybody else lives. Sometimes it seems like there's not a whole lot of transparency on social media. Like it just seems like everything is fake and, and staged and a lot of times it is. So keeping it real on a blog really helps for your own voice to shine through and for people wanting to keep coming back and reading it. Um, maybe you have like an addiction that you're trying to get over. And this is for if you want to blog about personal things. Now that's not for everybody. Um, I started, I changed my blog into a mental health blog about a year after we got married. Um, I was just sick of like living in the dark with the topic of my severe cyclical depression and my anxiety disorder and panic disorder. I was, I guess in a way, um, because I couldn't really reach out to family or friends because I was bedridden with depression. I felt like if I blogged about it, at least I was reaching out in some way and I was just lending my voice out there like, you know, I couldn't interact with the world so at least I could write. And since I wasn't writing to anyone in particular, it was anonymously. So to me, just by talking like I'm talking to you guys right now, there's something so fun and like open-ended about just talking to like a wide faceless audience. Um, it really just opens up your dialogue more and it's very healing to me. So maybe you're going through an addiction or an illness. Maybe you're going through like, you know, cancer treatment, uh, anything like that. Um, it can be healing if you feel like you can share your story. Uh, people, it's amazing when you put your own story out there, how, like what people say when they, uh, react they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that you shared that. Thank you so much. Like, it's just a way to make a difference. Um, because I'm so uh, sensitive and I do have depression and anxiety issues, I can't do um, a lot of the type of jobs that I thought I would see myself doing. Something where I would work a lot of hours and help other people because I don't have, um, I oftentimes don't have the capacity to be able to give that much to other people. So my way of giving back is by blogging and being open and putting my story out there so that it helps other people. And I know that it's helped other people because they've told me. And to me, that's one of the most gratifying things about blogging. Um, it's just, it's made this whole experience so worth it. So yeah, another topic is the different hardships you're going through and uh, things like that. Um, so have like a daily, if you want, this will keep your content coming out for a long time, for a very long time, for like several years or a few years. I would only do one or two blogs a month. Um, and then now I have um, like every two or three months, I do like a month log of daily vlog blogging and then in between, I have a little bit more like well-researched, well-thought-out uh, topics. So that's always a good tip too, I think, is um, have a daily bl uh, blog, just write, rant about whatever you want. 
but then in between your daily posting, which will keep people coming back because people like to have something to keep coming back to, you know, you kind of form a friendship with this anonymous reader, um, and they look forward to coming back to that too every day. So that's another tip if you can, once you reach that point is to uh, blog every day, but then in between have your well thought out and researched topics. Um, and researching doesn't mean it's not like, you know, your college classes where you have to get like um, scientific journal articles or use like the machines at the library and from newspapers just find different links online so that for me it's not so much about having a solid sometimes it's about having a solid scientific base about what I'm talking about and there are good links for that and I'll talk about that in another uh, part of the series um, but sometimes it's just a thing that someone can click on to get to, to read it in other people's words or if I don't feel like explaining what I'm saying I'll just hyperlink uh, another article about the topic so people can read more about it and know more what I'm talking about in some of my posts. Uh, let's talk, now that we talked about like the topic and picking your topics, um, let's talk about what platform to blog on. So Blogger is what I use, Blogger or Blogspot. It's been called both. It's kind of weird. Um, it's free and it's through Google. So that's easy for me because when I'm on Google Chrome right there next to my Gmail and my YouTube and my uh, Google Photos icon, there's the blogger right there. It's like an orange B and it's free. And um, I have heard of pros and cons about it. I've experienced pros and cons about it. I have learned recently that if you want to make more money with your blog you should switch it to something like a different platform than blogger and that might, that may be something I'm doing um, sometime in the near future I'm not sure yet um, it just depends but obviously when you very first start out blogging you're not gonna be making money anyway because the monetization process takes a while so I just read I uh, what's the word <laughs> I think that you should use Blogger. It's just free. It's easy. You don't have to worry about uh, putting in like codes or coding. Um, to me, that was just super easy and simple to start off with. Um, and then when you're ready for to apply for the monetization process, you'll use Google AdSense. So that's what I'm familiar with because that's what uh, program is used to monetize my blog on there. Um, so as you're writing the blog, you want to just kind of read over it and make sure that there's not a whole lot of spelling errors. Sometimes when I write a blog and it's about a new topic or maybe I wasn't feeling very well when I wrote it, so I'll have someone else read it first. That's awesome. Like have, you know, peer review, like have your family read it or a friend or like someone that you're in school with if you feel comfortable you're like hey does this sound right does this sound you know clear concise can you understand what I'm saying I also uh, just suggest copy and pasting your um, blog posts into Microsoft Word or any kind of uh, writing software so you can just check for basic spelling grammar errors things like that um, Another huge thing for posting your blog is picking a picture to go with it. So this is something that took me a few years to recognize. At first it was like, oh, I'm only going to put a picture in the blog if there's a picture that is, uh, you know, really goes with the blog post. Like um, sometimes I write about different crafts I'm doing, so I'd only put pictures in those blog posts because it was the craft I was working on. And I'd be showing step by step. Um, but I've recognized more than ever that a really good graphic is essential for people clicking on your blog post. It's like huge. So when I first recognized that, I would go onto this, uh, and I'll link it below, onto this um, app called PixArt, which is really cool. I love this editing software. I use it for all my 
like artsy selfies like if I want to do a selfie that has like stars or butterflies or whatever and it's cool too because you can put text so if uh, I started off with that with putting like a text on there like this is the subject of the blog um, and that was fun uh, then I realized since it's such a personal topic that I started getting way more reads when I would just include a picture of myself with each post so that's kind of my go-to now. I just have like a selfie, which is pretty easy because this day and age we're all on social media for the most part, so we're taking selfies a lot anyway. So I just kind of pick my favorite selfie at the time or maybe a selfie I think kind of matches the topic and that um, has really helped my reader level go up a lot. I don't know what it is. Like I, I said, I think it's connecting the voice with a face so just try if you don't know what graphic to pick or what picture just try doing a selfie and um, see where that takes you um, like I was saying pick outside references for at least some of your points in your posts um, the other thing people really like is people love to shop here in America you know we're like built on like consumerism unfortunately so um, I love to shop too there's nothing wrong with it. It's just it's the way it is. So I always post things that I'm shopping for or things that I purchase on Amazon. I'll put the links on there. People like to see like where I get, you know, certain makeup products or like household items, things that help me in my everyday life. If there's like a product that you use a lot, link it, try to link it on your blog. Um, the other cool thing with that is that uh, once you get a good reader, base on your blog and on your social media that represents your blog then you can become what's called kind of like an Amazon influencer and that means that uh, you can anytime you post anything from Amazon that you purchased you post your own personalized link and if someone clicks on it and buys that product you make money off of that you make commission so that's something that um, I finally got access to last December a few months ago and it's been so much fun just to see like whenever I link a product um, who's clicking on it and you know who buys it it's so not that I can see like personally who buys it but just how many people are buying it and just getting a little bit of commission off of that has been amazing um, ask for feedback ask for comments uh, since my topics are usually kind of personal because it is about mental health, um, not all of my blog posts are about mental health, but usually I touch on mental health in most of them. I don't get a too I don't get too many public comments on my blog. I get more comments on social media. Um, people usually, for my personal topics, people prefer to message me directly for feedback about. My blog but it's still interaction and interaction with your readers is huge so not only do you want just people reading it but you want them interacting with you as well it makes the whole experience more personal and then also um, it just means that you are making a difference you're reaching out and you're um, talking with people and that's just that's so cool that's so rewarding I have set up on my personal website lindsayloomis.com I made a separate page on there which is a contact form for a um, a special email um, address that I use just for my readers and people contact me there all the time about the topics that I write about or um, I've got people uh, for like different giveaways I have like people clicking on that and filling out the contact form and I've been able to give people some like really amazing things through that um, so yeah just try to get feedback try to get interaction that really helps uh, like I said like really solid makes that solid uh, connection that relationship between yourself and your reader um, share your blog across all social media platforms this is so 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 huge if you're blogging vlogging selling a product online you're only going to get a very small percentage of hits and clicks and readers and buyers if you're just choosing to have it be represented on that site only um, 
Like when I first started my wedding blog, I had links to it on our wedding website. So that's how I'd get that out there. And then I would share it on social media and then I would share it in the family, um, like the group emails for my wedding planning. And that's how people would get access to it. I wasn't gonna just sit there and wait for people to find it. So you have to get real comfortable real quick with self-promotion. Um, not everyone's comfortable with that, but for me, it's not, I don't look at it as like, oh, I'm promoting myself. I'm just like, look, I'm writing this thing and I wanna share it with everyone. So of course I'm gonna like keep pushing the link out there like every single day, every day. Um, post something that has a link that goes back to your blog. Um, that's huge. It's just, it makes all the difference in the world. And people that actually care, um, you know, they're not going to be bothered by it. So it's just so important to be pushing that. If you don't have Instagram, if you don't have Facebook, if you don't have Twitter, get all three of those. Get a TikTok, um, make a YouTube, and push your content in all platforms. Um, but that's more of like, later on in the process after you've been blogging for a while. So that'll be a different video on a different series as well. Um, so family, like G-rated topics are usually the best for getting monetized by Google AdSense. Um, there's this huge thing going on right now on the internet, especially with things owned by Google or other social media type sites where they don't like any type of adult content and you won't get sponsored or you won't get monetized if you have adult content on there. I try to keep my swearing to a minimal on my blogs, um, but in real life, you know, I, I swear all the time. So it's just kind of funny. I watch what I say. I try not to write about too much sexual content. Um, it just, it helps with the monetization process and it also keeps your reader audience open. So the more like family friendly and G rated content you put out there, the more it's going to get read. And I have had people tell me about how much they enjoyed my blog all ages all you know ethnicities all different all different types of people um because they can kind of understand what I'm going through because everyone goes through different struggles mentally and emotionally and because I try to keep it uh family friendly and g-rated I get uh all different kinds of people in my audience and that has been the best for me for growing my blog so just keep that in mind if it were up to me if I could keep it monetized and write about whatever I want I would share a lot more on there but I can't so I mean I've found other platforms and other ways to do that and that's a topic for a different day um, if you guys are interested so in closing for this this is just kind of a, I'm going over all the topics that I'll eventually cover in this series, but I just want to say a writer is going to write. That is so huge. Anytime I go through anything, like as soon as something bad happens to me or stressful, I'm like, oh, this is going to make great blog content. Like write every day. Just type something into your blog. Make a post. I have so many, po like dozens of posts that I've never posted that I just started writing um, just because I had to get something out. Once you start that cathartic release um, and you kind of train your yourself into knowing that when something stressful happens, you're going to write about it, you'll look forward to it. And it's such a great feeling to give yourself something that a gift of like something healthy that helps you release pain and energy and suffering um, and something some place to go to in a crisis that isn't unhealthy I'm not going to food I'm not going to drugs I'm not going to alcohol I'm not going to like other toxic people I'm going to my own blog and my own diary I journal and diary almost every single day on top of that 
when I was in high school and um, I loved writing then and I always thought, oh man, I'm going to be a writer when I grow up. And I always thought it would be like books or um, music, things like that. And like I still write songs, I still write poetry. I had no clue that it would be a blog that really gets me to having a paid job as a writer. It's been so cool to take that habit that I developed in middle school and uh, of writing every day. I started writing in a diary in fifth grade and I still have all my diaries. Um, that's another topic for another day in the sense that I want to use that to kind of start a podcast. I have a really good podcast idea so just chew on that. Um, if you are someone that has been writing in your diary for like a really long time and you have your old diaries, uh, message me. My links are all down below because I'm starting to kind of gather different people that have different things written down for this podcast idea I have. Anyway, um, that was a tangent. Um, writer's gonna write. Just write every single day. If you're not in the habit of writing every single day, just start. Oh my gosh, I can't tell you how much it's changed my life in so many ways. So, talk to you guys soon. Um, Eddie just got home and it's Saturday and it's beautiful and we're going to enjoy the weather. Be sure to like and subscribe and let me know how your blogging journey is going and I will talk to you guys soon.